The reason why I'm not sitting down as of yet, first things first, big sweep for the Toronto Blue Jays. Reason being, do you see the size of this thing? It poke a hole in the damn ceiling, but Blue Jays, they sweep away the Oakland A's, come back from 4-1 down, and win in 11 innings. What a game it was at Rogers Center, and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is still undefeated as a Toronto Blue Jay, and the Blue Jays, like I said, come back and win 5-4 in 11 innings. This game was incredible. And it starts right away. Eric Sogard. This guy has been something else. He goes 3 for 6 again today and leads off the bottom of the first inning like he did in game 1 of this series by crushing a shot deep and gone to right field. His third home run of the season and the thing I love about it, it was on an 0-2 pitch. And he got, where was it, a fastball? There's a slider over the middle of the plate. Not on an 0-2 pitch, you don't want to miss there. And they do, and he crushes it, and the Blue Jays got a 1-0 lead early. Beautiful. Now, Trent Thornton, throw strikes. He struggled in the first two innings. He had three walks in those first two innings. And again, overall, I didn't think he pitched terribly without the walks. Okay, he went five innings. He only gave up two hits. However, one of those walks did come back to haunt him as Chris Davis rips a double and Chapman comes in to score, who walked. So, yes, he had five walks. Not a good thing over five innings. Seven strikeouts, one earned run and over five innings of work. Not bad there for Trent Thornton. Much better than what we've seen as of late. But, again, still a thing we want to look at is throwing strikes. Same with Aaron Sanchez. Command is key. When Trent Thornton is throwing quality strikes, he is doing amazing. Same with Aaron Sanchez. You saw early in the ball game yesterday with Aaron Sanchez. He was dealing. Why? Because he was throwing strikes. Trent Thornton, after those first few innings where he couldn't find the zone, he was he was pitching pretty well the rest of the way. And he went five strong innings. We saw Daniel Hudson go another clean inning. He walked one batter, but struck out a guy no problem. Joe Biagini went a clean inning, nothing doing there. Ryan Tapera had an inning, uh, give up a hit, no walks, couple strikeouts. Great job there. Then Giles comes out there for the ninth inning, goes a clean inning, no hits, no walks, and a strikeout. And then we go to the top of the 11th. And Thomas Pannone on the mound. You know, he already went, I think it was an inning, and, and we're like, all right, he's doing okay here, but he runs into some trouble. Walks a batter, and he did walk three guys in his inning in two thirds. Did not have the zone. Ideally, the umpires weren't helping him either. But in the end, it's a 1 1 ball game, and you got to find ways to win. Now, Earlier in the game, I would say the Blue Jays were getting ripped apart by the umpires. Be, uh, on the double play by Chapman, I think it was. Or was it Chapman that was at third, uh, second base there? I think they were in the shift, so he was he was kind of covering second. And his foot comes off the base before he gets the ball. Once he catches the ball, he's already off the off the base. That's, a, that's safe. They review it, and they still call him out. And I'm thinking, what... What kind of angle did you guys look at? Now, if, if they end up saying that it was inconclusive, then, I mean, even then, it's a stretch and a half. It looked pretty damn obvious that he came off the base, and that's a big play in that ball game. Because if that's if he ends up being safe, I think there's like two on, or the base is loaded with only one out or none out. It's a big situation in the ball game. But again, it happens. Umpires are stupid sometimes. Apparently, the replay center in New York is stupid sometimes. In the end, you have a 1-1 game in the 11th, and Thomas Pannone, like I said, does not pitch very well. He goes an inning in two-thirds, giving up three hits, walks three, three runs given up, and the big, the deep fly ball to, uh, to left field, McKinney, he had more room to make that jumping catch. Jumps a little early, he misses it, and it, it all hell breaks loose there. They score three runs in the inning, and they're up 4-1. And Jays fans, I think most Jays fans are like, well, that's, that's pretty much it. We scored one run over, what, a uh, 10-inning uh, span. We're looking for three in one inning? There's no way this thing can, can happen. But then you think into your back of your mind. And if, you, if, if hardcore baseball fans think about the way that 11th inning was going to go, it was like this. Blake Trinan, the closer for the, uh, the, the Oakland Athletics, has never pitched more than one inning this year. Okay, and he pitched 
the 10th inning to get them out of that jam. Then they take the lead in the top of the 11th, and they're, they're like, all right, now it's a save situation. We'll just keep Blake trying to end in there. That led to being a big mistake because a guy coming into the game with a 0.63 ERA blows the game for the Oakland Athletics. Let's go to that crazy bottom of the 11th inning. Rowdy Telez crushes a ball to left field and it it, it, narr- it just, not by much, hits off the wall and it's a double lead off the inning. It could have been a home run, but then again, I thought to myself, you know, you want to start a rally. A solo shot doesn't mean anything. So a leadoff double, that means more to me. Then Alan Hansen, watch. We got two on and nobody out here. Tying runs to the plate. You get three cracks at the bat here. Billy McKinney grounds into fielder's choice to uh, Marcus Simeon. And um, and, and if the, the field, he goes to second base. You get uh, the guy at second. So runners at first and third now with one away for Brandon Drury. Coming into this series, Brandon Jury had a sub-200 batting average. And the only reason it was as high as it was is because of his dominant play against Oakland in that series in at the O.Co. Coliseum. And so far this series, he's been incredible. I think he had three for three yesterday. You know, I think he had the, he had the walk-off home run in game one. And he comes up now. I think he already had a hit in the ball game. <clears throat> yeah, he already had one hit. And he comes up with one out and runner to the corners. And Brandon Jury, he gets a fastball to the middle of the plate. And I'll, again, I'll reiterate it. Blake trying it. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Doesn't usually go more than one inning. So out here in the second, he gave up a double off, a ringing double off the wall from Rowdy Telez. A walk to Allen Hansen. Yeah, the fielder's choice. And then Brandon Drury takes a fastball to the middle of the plate, right down those meatball areas. And he seemingly went to Subway because he was throwing meatball subs up there. And he drills one to right center field. And it's gone. We are tied at four in, ele- in the 11th inning. This is called drama. And this Blue Jays team, we have learned about this Blue Jays squad. They do not quit. They fight till the bitter end. You go back to a while ago, I think it was against Tampa. Jays were down 7-1. They end up making it a 7-6 game and lose, but they did not quit. And today, you're down 4-1 in the bottom of the 11th. People are probably fi- filing out of the stadium already. And Brandon Drury's like, uh-uh, you want to come back in the ballpark because then we got a tie ball game. And we ain't done yet because that clears the bases. They're still one away. All right? Now, uh, next up, Freddie Galvis. He came in to pinch hit uh, there later in the ball game. Great to see him back out there. And he singles to right field off of Blake Trinan. Then, Danny Jensen, he walks in that inning. Now we got two on. And still only one away. And then Eric Sogard coming up. I'm like, man, this is good. This could be crazy. This could, wouldn't this be an emotional job for Eric Sogard? Go four for six and walk the game off. And he flies out to uh, Robbie Grossman there in left field. And now there's two out. And we're like, ah, that's your opportunity there. And Justin Smoke is up. Obviously batting left-handed against Blake trying to come on. Thank you for focusing back on me. And the shift is on. So what does Smokey do? He slaps it through the giant hole in the left side of the infield. And Freddie Galvis rounds third. He comes home and it's ball game over. Blue Jays win it 5-4 in 11 innings. They walk it off for the second time in three days. I think the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. era has started off pretty damn good, if you ask me, with a sweep of the Oakland Athletics. You're there. I even brought out the giant flipping broom for this one. I mean, come on. Beautiful. The Blue Jays, like I said earlier in the video, they scored one run through 10 innings, and we expected, and a lot of people did not expect them to come back and score three, let alone four, in the the bottom of the 11th to win it. What a job by this Blue Jays team. And by the way, I'm just going to throw out there Elvis Luciano. He went went one third of an inning, okay, and got out of that kind of Thomas Pannone craziness there in the top half of the 11th, and the Blue Jays. For the first time since being 2-2 two and two to start the year, which really isn't much to say, are 500 at 14-14. and 14. Did anyone, 
Did anybody see this coming? No. Are we enjoying it? Oh, yeah. We're loving it here. I mean, I'd like to play Oakland and Minnesota more often. I mean, then again, Minnesota absolutely demolished the Orioles. I think they... They, I think they, 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 they did what we did to Oakland. So, but anyways, we can't worry about those teams because the Blue Jays are playing pretty damn good baseball. Not only did they crush the Oakland A's yesterday 7-1, not only did they get that, you know, give up the lead in that, uh, in, in they've done, they, the last three games for this team, the Jays have won in three different ways. You have the 2-0 lead. You give up the 2-0 lead and it's 2-2. You walk it off. The next game, just a clean game. You just beat the snot out of the win 7-1. Today, tied game for most of the game. You lose, you're down 4-1 in extras. You give up a big lead, but you come back and win. So you not only gave up a lead and then walked it off, you crushed them. And then you you, you, you were down and the Jays came back and won. It's finding ways to win on a daily basis. And this team, boy, oh boy, they have found ways to do it. And man, it is fun to watch Blue Jays baseball, at least through the first 28 games of the season. And guys, watching the Boston Red Sox uh, tailspin the way they are right now, watching Chris Sale having six losses on the year so far, oh, it's beautiful. It is gorgeous. You know, Chris Sale with not, with not as much as velocity as he once had. <sighs> Got to reinvent himself now. And we're going to see if he can or if he can't. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out for him. But for the Blue Jays, what a ball game. Eric Sogard, three for six. Incredible ball game for him. Gritchick, one for five. Telez, one for five. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., one for four. And guys, look. I'm liking what we're seeing from Vladdy. Yes, he only has one hit in each game. But he's got one hit in each game. He's hitting 250 through the first three games of his career. And that one the hit that he had today was an absolute bullet. He will be fine. And the thing I love about it, we're all waiting for this hit, his, his bat to kind of explode and, and, and show us all the talent that we've all been hearing about. But it's his glove that we're talking about. We're all like, this. he's not a, he's not as bad of a defender as we think. As we've heard that he's not the greatest defender. I mean, it's only been three games. But he's not used to turf. And he's looking pretty good out there. I'm loving what we're seeing defensively from Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And to see that, he reminds me of Donaldson. The reason being, I'm confident every time he gets the ball. And, and that's what you want in a third baseman. That's what you want on every player. You want to be defensively um, confident in your team. And as of right now, this Blue Jays team is not only, we're not only confident in them, they are very confident in themselves. It is incredible to watch for the Blue Jays. And people who love looking at standings, I'll give you a little bit of something here. First off, the Blue Jays are only four and a half games back out of first place for the Tampa Bay Rays, who, are, who smushed the Red Sox today. The Jays are only two and a half games back of the wild card spot. I'm just gonna—I I don't know—20 20 games, 28 games into the year, but I just thought I'd fire you guys up with a little bit of stuff there. But what a job this Jays team has done! Not only did they sweep the Oakland A's, not only are they 500 now in the year, they sweep the season series against Oakland six zilch. Beautiful. And Blue Jay fans. There's a lot of talent coming in that minor league system. Seeing what this team is doing right now, and I love that they're not going on crazy win streaks. They're just winning games. Because win streaks usually end, and then you go on losing streaks. For the Jays, you won uh, three out of four against Minnesota. That's great. Then you sweep Oakland. That's great. Then you come home and you lose two to uh, to San Francisco. But then you welcome back in Oakland, and you win three more. It's beautiful. This team's 500. You want to see them continue this stretch. Now they go out west. Great. Let's take on the LA Angels. All right, starting, I think it's a three game set. They're, uh, yeah, and they head down to Arlington, Texas on the weekend. So tomorrow they have a day off. Good because the Raptors are playing and we don't have to stress about flipping channels left and right. That's going to be nice. And uh, Tuesday, April 30th is game one. It's a 10 07 first pitch there in LA. Clay Buckles on the mound versus Griffin Canning. Looking like, it, is it his major league debut or is it a 22 year old? He hasn't pitched it this year. I'm assuming it's his major league debut. And game two is Marcus Stroman on the mound for the Blue Jays versus Felix Pena on the mound for the LA Angels. And then the finale is Aaron Sanchez versus Tyler Skaggs. 
These off days are coming at a perfect time because the Blue Jays rotation, obviously, right now is very diminished. And um, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Live. I know it's a really long video, guys, but I want to do it live here on the uh, with the videos here for you guys. What's up with Ryan Barucki? Is it anything? Nothing. In the past week, there's been nothing on Ryan Barucki because I'm and Clayton Richard. I understand uh, set to resume throwing. That was two weeks ago, so I don't know what the heck the deal is with him. And that's really your injury report when it comes to the Toronto Blue Jays pitching staff. This team, look, we're not expecting them to be this playoff team, but the way they're playing right now, it is fun to watch. All right, so you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoyed this video. You enjoyed the game there today and the way this one finished. Smack that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit that subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on this game. What are your thoughts on Brandon Drury? And ever since, you know, we've heard this whole Vladdy thing and whatnot, Brandon Drury goes through the series. He hit 180-something coming into the series. He's now hitting 219 exiting the series. But I want to see him hit against somebody else other than Oakland because that's really all he's done this year is hitting against and I want to see his numbers when he's not facing Oakland, they're probably like 100, maybe a little bit above that. But otherwise, he's doing a very good job against the Oakland Athletics. That's great to see. But you don't see them anymore the rest of the way. So you got to find a way to hit against the other teams. But what are your early thoughts on Vladimir Guerrero Jr.? What are your thoughts on the way this team's been winning games? Also, do you have any expectations now as the season's progressing here? If you do and you start thinking playoffs, I'm going to put the train on in reverse a bit. Take it easy a little bit. Let's bring it back. Because only 28 games in, and we saw this last year, the month of April, the Jays played fantastic. We're like, man, this team's amazing. And then they hit a brick wall and fell apart. So let's just let's just breathe a little bit and let's just take it game by game. All right. So guys, uh, what a, comment down below all that great stuff. And Evan and I will talk to you as podcast edition. It's gonna be on Thursday afternoon. Link is in the description for the podcast channel and for the podcast itself on iTunes. Go check out Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. My main man Mo Buckets on Twitter. He is the one who does all that stuff on Blue Jays Wave. He's already posted the highlights of the Jays game. He posted the highlight of Brandon Drury's three-run shot. So if you guys want to see that again, go check that out. Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. Please go do so. Great guy. Great content. And, um... I love watching his stuff, all right? So Twitter is also down below, guys. Follow up, send me a DM. Do all that great stuff, and I will talk to you guys at Raptors Edition tomorrow night, game two of round two against the Philadelphia 76ers at Scotiabank Arena. The Raptors look to take a 2 nothing series lead heading to Philly. That if, if you're a Raptor fan, that is exactly what you want to see. Look, if you're split... You're in that kind of, oh, I mean, we won one, but you're you're still feeling that little bit of iffiness. You get a 2-0 lead, you're feeling confident. Tomorrow night, guys, I think it's an 8, is it 8 p.m. tip? I think it's an 8 p.m. tip off there tomorrow night. Uh, 8 o'clock tip off there tomorrow night. And by the way, the Boston Celtics crushed Milwaukee in Milwaukee in game one, 112-90. And uh, Golden State's up 103-100 over Houston in Game 1 with 21 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Oh, boy. But like I said, guys, Game 2 for the Raptors is tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. And as for the Blue Jays, they have the day off tomorrow, and they get to go out west to L.A. to take on the Angels. Clay Buckles against uh, Griffin Canning in his Major League debut. I'm assuming if I'm wrong, then I apologize, but I'm assuming it's his Major League debut. 10:07 first pitch there in L.A. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you guys then.